Ja me emme on kumoa niin kuuma. Miten fancy did I? Just getting fancy. No. Um, I obviously I felt my hamstring um, in the second leg at Bradford, at, at the den, sorry, against Bradford. Um, physio's done, worked the magic, thought it was okay. Did two days training, I think, before the game, and then, yeah, it went again in the warm up, so it was a rubbish day all around. What were you doing? Were you just jogging? Or were you just nah, no, nah, we were doing a few sprints, uh, <laughs> which doesn't usually happen. But uh, no, nah, doing a few sprints in the warm up, and yeah. It, it went and I knew straight away. What was that realisation that you were not going to be able to make it? It, it was a stinker. Um, I remember going in the change room, lads coming up to me. Um, you know, wishing I was wishing them all the best. They were like bantering, a little bit of banter flying about. But uh, yeah, I was down until it was 40 actually who came up to me and said, you know, look, get a smile on your face. You know, the lads are going to do it. Give them all the support. And so yeah, I tried. But obviously it was a... Weren't meant to be, but we're there, we're there again this year, and um, we're hoping to do one better. Is there a bit of you that thought maybe I can keep it quiet, or was it completely gone? Nah, it was completely gone. I had a scan a few days later, and I think there was a grade two tear in there, so there was no way of playing. And where did you watch the game after that? Sat next to in the um, seating bit on the dugout. So. And what was that like? I got a great time to be fair. It was a nice day. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a great time, so I was I took the benefit from it. What was it, what was it like, kind of serious now watching? Rubbish. Yeah, yeah really rubbish. But um, luckily going in this year, selected and fit, healthy. <coughs> um, I think the squad is more or less all fit and healthy, so so yeah, it's going to be a good day. You're going to take it easy in, in the warm-up this year? <laughs> I've been taking it easy <laughs> in the training, so... You know, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. It, nah, yeah. It's all fine. I feel healthy. I feel good. There's no, um, there's no problems at all with my health. So yeah, it'll be all guns blazing. Yeah, hopefully win promotion be a good end to a good season. Definitely, definitely. Tony Craig replaced you in the lineup last year. It's a bit of a tough game. Do you feel this season has answered some of his critics? Yeah, I think a lot of us have. You know, um, this season has been a lot of ups and downs. Um, and the highs have been really good. You look at the FA Cup run. The runs unbeaten we've been on, but then obviously we had the month was it where we lost? I think we lost all the games in one month, might be September. So you know, especially with our fans, you know they're very passionate, they're very um, vocal. If you're doing well, they're there to support you. But if you're not doing so well, they'll tell you. So um, yeah, TC's obviously had a tough part, but he's he's come good. But like I said, there's a number of players who have. Um, Character and um, and done well this year. Does that drive you on to do what the fear of maybe being heckled by? Nah, not for me. It's, I think I speak for Greg's as well. It's chill. What? No one means to go out there and to put a bad performance in. So, you know, you guys at work, you'll have bad days. It's just fortunate for you guys. You don't have if it's a home get twelve thousand people calling you every name under the sun. Uh, we do. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's just what it is. We go there. We. We do our best and at the end of the day, I'm sure if we put in a good performance, we'll get the positive result. It'll take a while to get used to that though. You, you might find it now, but at first it was a bit like, oh, compared to what right. you've been at. Well, Not really. No, no. Yeah. Uh, you get it at every club. Yeah. Um, obviously, Barron's been at a few more clubs than me, but <clears throat> even at the lower clubs, you still get still get the odd fans that, that don't like you. So you just, I think brought up from an early age, you just, in football, you just get on with it. Water off a duck's back. Yeah. If the best get hammered, Ronaldo, Messi, then <laughs> you ain't got a chance, me and Greg, we ain't got a chance. <laughs> no problem. Is it? And Byron, what's the biggest difference between this team now and the team last year going into the third final? About two players. <laughs> <laughs> Thieves and tails. Yeah. <laughs> no, last year we flew into the playoffs, didn't we? Um, this year, well, I think throughout the year we've had high pressure games. When you look at the FA Cup against the Premiership teams, and even in the league. Our last game of the season, we had to win. Scunthorpe, obviously, we had to win. Uh, we kind of crawled our way along the line, but we're at the same point. You know, it doesn't matter how good we did last year or how good or bad we've done this year, we're still in the same position. How much do you think the change that Neil had to make to the team before the, before the match, that sort of late change, had a bearing on things? And obviously, Joe going off early on as well in the first half. Um, what I've helped. I've no, my what? voice speed. <coughs> Looking back, obviously, it's, it's not the best, but at that time, we're all professionals, we're all there to do a job. Um, 
we didn't really think it had been that bad. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't go our way. And now you can look at it thinking, it's that, is it is it because of that, is it because of that? Even if Byron played, we still might not have won. You just never know. So it's, it's one of them, it's, like I said before, bad day at the office and unfortunately it was, it was a final. I spoke to Paul Robinson, obviously he had the experience of well of losing and then winning. He said that he got more drunk, the players got more drunk the season they didn't go up than the season they did because they were kind of drowning their size. What about, what about you guys? What, what there's a free bar were there. <laughs> yeah. Win almost. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was it like 12 months ago? What did, what did, what did you guys do? What, straight after the final? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John my sorrows. <laughs> uh, yeah. Had a protein shake. No, nah, drowned my sorrows for a, for a few days. Um, took me a couple of days to get over it. But then you just start looking at a new season. And uh, we achieved, we, what we achieved last year was good. Um, and hopefully this year we'll go one better. But you say uh, it took a few days to get over it, but as you mentioned, September wasn't great and the manager talked about it being a bit of a hangover at the start of the season. Is that kind of how it felt to take a while? Obviously, <coughs> the disappointment in the first couple of days, but for the team's performance to kind of get yeah, it. I don't know, because we started good in August. Uh, we had a good few games. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe we thought it was going to be a bit easier this year because what we achieved last season and kind of... Knocked us back for six in September, and obviously we just had to pick up his game. And uh, I think we kind of struggled for a little bit after September, but we're in the exactly same position as last year, whether we finished third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. Um, one game to go. Byron, well, it does make a lot of progress, obviously, over the last couple of years since the manager's come in, but how important is it to, to now make sure you do go up this season? Yeah, there's no getting away from it, it's massive. Um, me, myself, Sean Grace is the same, we want to play in the championship. Um, so yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's a big game. It, you know, it benefits us as individuals, it benefits the club. Um, I'm sure the fans would prefer to be playing against likes of Leeds and what else have we was coming down Sunderland. from the championship, Sunderland, teams like that. So um, so yeah, that's the pressure we put on ourselves. The pressure, well yeah, mainly from ourselves, the managers, top joy, don't put any pressure on us. Um, so, so yeah, that's what our, our job is to do on Saturday. Just on your journey to get a result, well, you played in the Czech Republic. Yeah. Um, which not every football league player <coughs> in the Czech Republic. Um, explain what what happened with that. I just got the opportunity. I was uh, a long story. Couldn't speak language. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> come back. Couldn't argue with anyone out there. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I had, I fell out with a manager in England. weren't interested in football, and got the opportunity to go over there and really enjoyed it. I kind of kick-started my career again. What was your life different countries? It's good, obviously. I was only young, you learn a lot about yourself, life skills off the pitch, as well as a different style on the pitch. Um, so, yeah, so I'd say to any youngster, if you know, it's not going well for him in England, there's a chance to go abroad, then to take that chance. Why did, why, how did it all come about? Why? An agent rang my dad, um, and yeah, just an option. There was no, no risk as, as such. You know, I weren't interested in football, I wasn't enjoying my football, so I just went out there and Fell in, back in love with the game. How did you fall back in love with it? Was you just playing regularly? Yeah, just playing regularly, training, no pressure. Just it weren't about pressure from fans and whatever else. And I think the main pressure people or youngsters do is put on themselves, and it's dealing with that. So you know, I got away. I kind of there was no pressure. I didn't know if anyone was hammering me because I didn't know what they were saying. So, um, so yeah, so I was chilled. Playing up front, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was chilled and. Yeah, the rest is history. Went out there, really enjoyed it. But then wanted to get back to England just because obviously our days aren't very long. There's a lot of time chilling out, and there's only so many TV series and shopping you can do. Did you learn any of the language? Yeah, a little bit of swear words. <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> and obviously, Chris Twardek he is uh, well, he's Czech, Canadian, English, everything. So um, decides what he wants on the day. So yeah, I can say I can speak to him a little bit. As Yorkshireman, do you have any relationship, particular relationship with Bradford or is it really particularly good beating them in the final? Does it mean anything? Any difference? No, they don't like me, but yeah. Is that from the Halifax days? Or maybe, yeah, probably. Just generally or maybe, yeah. maybe. Uh, every time I play up there, I get a lot of stick, so I <coughs> assume I'll be getting some more stick on, on Saturday. Does that motivate you? Does that make you play better when you get stick? Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. Never boo a bad player. That's what my dad always told me. So, but I'm is obviously doing something right. Yeah, maybe.
And the manager was saying that how he's going to try and, you know, the, he, he's got a memory of losing the playoff final, how he's motivated <coughs> in the following season, so he wants that to be a motivation as well. Do you think that's a, a, a shared feeling? In the massive, room? massive. Um, <coughs> losing there is probably one of the worst feelings you can have as a football. Um, I've been there supporting Sheffield United when I was younger at Wembley, lost. Um, and it's worse when you're playing. It's ten times worse when you're playing. So I don't want that feeling again. So I'm going to try everything, everything, to not have that feeling again. Did you be sure you was that with United? You went as a, as a fan then? I can't remember what year it was. A while ago now. Yeah. And um, do you feel you have unfinished business in the Championship? Because obviously you came to Millwall in that relegated season. I won't say unfinished business. I'm just thinking of a, another chance. Um, I thought I did well, personally, for the first year. Uh, unfortunately, we got relegated that year. Um, I think if we'd have stayed up that year, we'd, we'd, we'd still be there, still be there now. Um, and I think once Mill's a big club, once it gets back up there, then they've got the foundation to stay up there. Have you had any text messages off your former strike partner, Jamie Vardy? Nah, not yet. Nah, no. nah. You expect them? Nah, I don't, <laughs> don't want to speak to him today. Not yet. Not until I win. Who's better to play with, uh, Vardy or, or Steve Morris? <laughs> <laughs> Two different players. Um, for one, I didn't play up front with Jamie Vardy. <laughs> I didn't play up front with Jamie Vardy. No comment, uh, that's the answer. No. Uh, Vardy always used to play on the left. So he was never used to play up front with Jamie. What makes your partnership with Steve Morrison so, um, so clinical in this division? We've been, we've been asked this numerous times this week and we've both said we don't know how it works. It's something just something clicks. We never work on it in training. Um, we are usually on different teams in training, so we never usually work on it. The gaffer texts me and Steve now and again for finishing, but that's about it. But uh, as soon as we get on the pitch, he knows his job. I know my job. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at, um, and it just seems to work. It's not really the case of Lee Gregory and Steve Morrison play well and Millwall win. He'll be like out of Saturday. Yeah, I should hope so. Yeah, yeah. Usually is. Definitely is. They set the tone for the whole team as well. Getting away from that, them to uh, the, no pressure then, no. the focal point for us. No, it is, it's true. Um, yeah. You know, there's not many better partnerships up top in this league, so they're massive for us.